When we left you last, we were barreling down the Oxford Canal, trying to reach a mooring just north of Thrupp. So it's getting to the end of the day, and uh, the canal is fighting back, and I think it's winning. Did we make it? Well, yes, we did, but at a cost. We'll tell you exactly what the price was in just a minute. I do notice when I disagree with an argument, though, she starts putting a plank out by the side of the boat. And I don't know if that's a threat or just a hint to tell me to shut up. First, grab a drink and we'll give everyone a quick recap. We're Wendy and Lawrence, and it shouldn't be a surprise that after traveling the world... We went from Dubai to the Maldives to this. It's cold. It's very cold. We're supposed to have snow here later on today. We would choose the historic English canals to call home. We intend to retire on a narrow boat. With over 2,000 miles of navigable canals, both our wanderlust and the need for exploration are all satisfied by the system affectionately called the cut. To bring this retirement dream into reality in a somewhat sensible fashion, we rented a 57-foot narrowboat from College Cruisers to explore the famous Oxford Canal and see if we had what it takes to become constant cruisers. We only have a few days left on this great experiment and are rushing south to make sure we return the narrowboat we've called home for the last week on time and in one piece. There's the boat sitting where we should be sitting. We took our spot. I did it, baby! All right, get the perfect. You oh. got it. Oh, you're there. Look at you. You want to take over? No, because there's somebody coming through. Oh. See it? Morning. Morning. What's that? She's actually the star of the show. Did you not know that? too much weight for you, am I? Okay. You want me to throw you a line and you can just tag along? Okay, I was nice to the people who stole our lock or our mooring. That is a good mooring. It's uh, just past the swing bridge that's always open. You can just get on there right after the mooring landing, um, which of course is never used because that bridge seems to be up. But the nice thing is they've got a, uh, a ring in the ground and then there's a stake which is sort of permanently in the ground. So uh, that was probably the most secure mooring outside the Armco we've had this whole trip. So you may not see much of Wendy today because, and we'll talk about it when she comes up here. Oh, she's coming up here now. But she, uh, yesterday, not only was it a long day, but it uh, was hot took a lot longer and we ended up getting to where we needed to be at seven o'clock at night. So we had to improvise because as you heard, our mooring was taken. So the nearest place we could find had nothing but stinging nettles on the bank with a couple of beaten down areas. And uh, Wendy jumped ashore to hold the center line and hurt her knee and hurt her ankle. So she's, uh, she's uh, limping around today and we want to keep her off her feet because we have two days left on our vacation, our holiday, to actually uh, explore Oxford itself. So we wanna make sure that she's able to do that because we're gonna be on our feet all day. So if you see Wendy lounging around today, it's not because she's lazy, it's because she's rested. She's an invalid, be nice. Today's cruise will see us tackle four locks and four movable bridges, all spread over five miles of canal. We want to moor just past these and close to College Cruisers, which is located in the heart of Oxford and where we rented our narrowboat. If we can do this, it will be an easy trip to return the narrowboat by mid-morning tomorrow. Easily the best part of today's journey is cruising through the canal-side village of Thrupp, which is certainly a hive of narrowboat activity today. Who should be using the services but our lock buddies from yesterday? 
Wendy doesn't feel comfortable driving through the narrow swing bridge. So she'll hobble on over and operate it for us. Be careful how you step off, baby. I know, I'm trying. I'm good, thank you. She didn't get far before starting a conversation with our lock buddies. Naturally, we chat by shouting from boat to boat. Is this what the gongoozlers want to hear? Narrow boat talk? <laughs> How long is your boat? How long? Five. Well, it's longer, but I'm sure you've heard that before. Thrupp could be considered a sleepy village, but the Oxford Canal can get really busy through here. Between the famous pubs and incredible moorings, working your way through the canal in the village itself can be challenging. So, we're passing the Jolly Boatman where we already came here once, I don't know, the days have all blurred into, into each other, but on the way up, right, when we yeah. moored at that spot the first time last time. And we were going to come last night until um, Wendy tried to do a triple twist on her jump onto the shore last night and hurt her ankle and knee. And she was, during that swing bridge, she was really limping uh, to get over there. So you're a trooper for doing that, babe. But we did determine a couple of things. We determined not only do you walk faster than a narrow boat, but... But the little uh, paddle bikes yeah. and kayakers uh, are faster, but not only are they faster, they like are kicking our butt. They are. It's not I, even minorly faster. No, no, that's just like zing. We had a couple on their paddle bicycles behind us. And uh, they were so sweet because I let like, you want to come past there because they literally had to stop and coast. Oh, you know, speaking of which, I can go a little bit faster now. So our resolution today is not to be the beginners, the newbies on the narrow boat. And we're not going to break the rules, but we feel that maybe, uh, and we're going to talk about this in a second, maybe we're taking so long to get from A to B because we're going perpetually slow. Uh, because we're learning and you know you have a little bit more time to make a decision when you're going slow but like i said we don't want to upset people who are moored so we're definitely trying to work out the whole tick over thing um, yeah i think that piece is good but also whenever i drive if i see a bridge or a boat in the distance i immediately go back to tick over speed which just takes us longer before we even approach the area doesn't help either. No, everyone's got to learn at their own speed and I'm glad you're doing that because it gives you time to work out what you need to do. But I started taking a video of us approaching a bridge the other day, yesterday, and I looked down at the time that it elapsed by the time we went into the bridge, it was three minutes. And that's from us first visualizing it to us physically going under it. I was the one driving? Yeah. I'm surprised it was three minutes. I thought it would actually be longer. <laughs>
So we've now done two locks in uh, today's method, which is Wendy gets to drive the boat, I jump out, grab the center line, tie her up, and then run in, set the lock if it needs to be set, at least open the paddle, or the gate rather, and then run back, untie it, throw the center line on, and my love just drives on in. And then, <laughs> she's really cool. This is good because we've run out, I shouldn't say this because maybe I'm jinxing it. We, we don't have as much traffic coming towards us now. And we, Wendy's had the luxury of being able to just basically creep out of the lock and gives me enough time to actually close the gate and jump back on board right here back. Lower the paddles start. and jump back. Oh, well, that's right, yeah, lower the paddles. Forgot about that part, yeah. Yeah, so it's working out well, I think. It's a little hot, but... Yes, working those locks is very... Yes. Hot. It really is. Okay, so we are at... We just did... Is that the Kittleton lock we did? Yes, because now we're coming up to a bridge 229, then bridge 230 that needs a key, and then Duke's lock. Okay. I don't think you need your hat now. Well... Maybe. Uh, let me just cool down for a little bit. Get this, let this air out, and then I'll put the hat on. Here, why don't you, I'll do this too. Oh, okay. There we go. Should we buy a large fan, and I'll just fan you like the Egyptians I back thought, in the day? I thought you were my biggest fan. How much bigger of a fan can I have than you? Oh, apparently I'm not blowing enough uh, hot air at you, though. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> I see you are sweating. I am. I'm really that. Now you know how I feel. Plus you, I have hot flashes. You, you know how you're hustling so hard, that urge that you had to pee before you started hustling just disappears. That's because your body said, I need that moisture back in. You <laughs> that, don't have to pee. That's how much I was hustling in that last lock. But it worked out well, so I'm very happy. And Is oh, you know, why are we going so slow? Duh. Looks like we're finally getting a break with this hot weather, and we cruise into some welcomed cooling rain. How do you like narrow boating in the rain, baby? Well, it's a light rain, so it's just refreshing. All right, you're doing a grand job. Our issue on this trip has been that everything seems to have taken us three times as long. Now, admittedly, we're taking our time to learn stuff. Uh, you know, going slow while we're learning to drive and taking our time through the locks and swapping out different duties. So I get it, but it's been way off on what we thought uh, it would take. We're even given a guide by the college cruisers when um, they lent us the boat. But there's also a narrow boat hack. If you want to quickly work out how long something's going to take, basically what you do is you take the miles that you have to travel, you add it to the locks. In other words, if you're going to travel three miles and you have three locks, that gives you six. And then you divide that by, you take that total number and divide it by three. In this case, you'd end up with two hours. So that is technically how long roughly it should take you. Now, of course, uh, what's going to happen is if you end up being number three in queue on your side of a, on your side of a lock, uh, that's going to take uh, a lot of time. And I say this being one ourselves. If you get stuck behind some people with a rental, forget about it. So, yeah, that's a nice narrow boat hack. Yes, it was actually strange having done so many locks and uh, me actually having to train a couple of people. When I say train, just mention, oh, you need to do this or that. Um, so I thought that was interesting.
we must be getting good at managing our time. We've made it past all the locks and bridges, mooring at Wolvercote, a village just north and part of Oxford. This puts us about two miles from college cruisers, and even better, around an hour's worth of cruising time for tomorrow. Wolvercote, or is it Wolvercot, is right on the canal with the Plough Pub just a few minutes walk away. The weather's cleared up and we're enjoying a beautiful English sunset. So, we parked up the narrow boat. Yes. We filmed a bit that you'll see way later from now. Yeah. <laughs> and some of us slept. Just a little bit. And we both showered, which yes, we Yes, everybody both will thank us yes. for. Yeah, we, we needed it. We started pre-packing because we're moving to a hotel tomorrow. Yeah. And um, we're going to go right near. Right near, just actually, what, a block away? Two yeah. blocks away from uh, College Cruises where we would be dropping off our boat. Yeah. Uh, but because I hurt myself jumping off of the narrow boat, we've called a, an Uber to take us. Yeah, I gotta take Hop along out here for Ty, so. The Plow Pub is a perfect spot to be picked up by a taxi for the quick ride to Giggling Squid. And yes, it's very close to College Cruisers. This award-winning restaurant presents itself as offering Thai tapas. Approaching 50 locations across the country, it must be doing something right. And we certainly don't have any complaints about the food or the service. Even if we are a little exhausted. It's our final morning on the Oxford Canal. It seems there's always enough time on the canals to make one more friend before leaving this incredible community. So we're off. Uh, yes! This is, that was the final time we'll push off on this particular narrow road. That's the, what is it, like a couple miles? And we made a friend right before we left. Yeah, we found a little kitty who kept coming up aboard. Yeah. So we gave it our leftover raw eggs and a little bit of ham, although I'm sure the ham wasn't the best because it is lunch meat, so right. it's processed. Anyhow, the thing, hungry so wasn't complaining about any of the food. Yeah that was the that was the toughest friend to leave behind on this Yeah trip. we had to we had to <laughs> kick her or him off because he didn't want to leave. Yeah. I, I had to put his food in a little plastic container so it looks like we left trash there but we didn't. It's all to keep the little guy fed. Yeah I think there's something about canal cats. I'd love to hear the story about because I've well we saw that one cat where he, the cat followed the guy back to his boat and he said, is that yours? He goes, no, he just comes here when he wants to be there. Oh. <laughs> so. Well, and in that time that we saw the cat living, definitely lived aboard, uh, but there were all these dead mice for like a good quarter of a mile. Yes. Uh, yeah. And we finally put two and two together and realized yeah. the cat was a hunting. That was a pest control to, uh, effort. So anyway, uh, that was Bridge 236 where we stayed last night. And I was really concerned because it was on a busy tow path. It was across the street from a pub and it was next to a railway station. But none of that seemed to matter. It was a really quiet, boring uh, 48 hours. Um, so we were also exhausted. So if anything happened in the middle of the night, it didn't wake us up. This is true. So onward. <laughs> this is a bittersweet cruise, taking us towards leaving the English canals. Look at you, babe. 
pretty damn straight to me. Not out of the woods yet. What started as an overwhelming task of managing a long boat along narrow canals. If you need me to come up and help, I can. I think I got it, maybe. And through complicated locks has become our favorite place to be. My first bridge, baby. We now know we want this to be our life. I'll tell you in five minutes if I don't hit you. I think you have about two feet on this side. Okay. Do you want to jump on and take it? I can if you like. I won't be offended in any way, shape, or manner. He did let us drive it in. And no, we didn't hit anything. So, this is it. This is the end of the line. Goodbye. This is the end of the narrow boat adventures for now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being my crewmate. Oh, thank you for being patient when I got us into his driving scrapes. <laughs> All right, on to Oxford. Before heading to Oxford, we have a few more narrow boat adventures up our sleeves. First and foremost, we still have a ton of questions about living on the cut and how to constantly cruise the English canals. All we have are more questions. We we have more questions. When you when you first learn something, you realize how little you know. How little you know. Because it just spawns more advanced questions. Exactly. Or questions we never thought of. We would love if everyone could help us out with those. See, even if you don't have a narrowboat and you're one of these people that, like myself, watches a bunch of narrowboat videos, maybe you've seen something that I missed or we missed, right? We'll also share some unseen footage that we couldn't squeeze in over the last six episodes, so you won't want to miss that. I thought you guys were having a party up here you didn't invite anyone else to. Yeah, I, I mentioned how you were luxuriating on the boat. I'm like... They must be passing around shots or something up there because they're exactly. taking their time. Haven't you, haven't you been on, up here on these boats? <laughs> Party Central. Hello, Bushes. It's so nice to see you up close and personal. Speaking of unseen footage, be sure to check out our other travel adventures. So far, we've shared our time at Machu Picchu, Dubai, Germany, and the Maldives. As usual, your company made this latest travel adventure that much better. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button below. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. Make sure the bell is pressed so you don't miss any new videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do it. You know you want to. Until next time, my friend, travel well and be safe.